David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you one of the latest offerings from Diplomat, which would be the Arrow in Turquoise. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Diplomat Arrow, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample as well as let you know what you need to do in order to enter for a chance to win this very pen, courtesy of Yaffa Brands, the U.S. distributor for Diplomat who provided this pen for review and to give away to one of you. I have reviewed previous versions of the Arrow, but the last time was almost three years ago. Their Arrow offerings have really grown since then, so I thought it would be a good time to take another look at a unique pen with what I feel has one of the best steel nibs you can buy. The pen arrives in this box. You know, I've always liked Diplomat boxes. Um, i actually get the actual box out of here. The top of the box is metal, which slides off. And then underneath we have a little flap here, and then there is a pullout tray. Underneath here there's a certificate of authenticity as well as a couple of ink cartridges. And here is the pen. This is the Diplomat Arrow in turquoise. The arrow is made from an anodized aluminum, Anodizing is an electromechanical process which converts the surface of a metal into one which is durable and corrosion resistant, and in the case of this pen, it has a bit of a matte finish. I think this turquoise looks very sharp. Now, over the last couple of years, Diplomat has been killing it with the colors they've released for the Arrow. I'm not going to show them all, but uh, there's lots of bold and vibrant colors. Uh, every single one of them has hit the mark, in my opinion. Uh, there hasn't been a single one that I didn't consider picking up. Um, I have two in my collection, one in black and one in orange. Uh, each time they released a new one, I was very tempted, uh, but I had to think to myself, do I really need another arrow? Uh, I did my best to resist. I I'm trying to get a little bit better regarding my purchases and be a little more selective rather than wanting one of everything. The overall shape of the arrow is very Zeppelin-esque. Uh, not that long ago, Diplomat came out with a Zeppelin version of the arrow, adorned with some airship-like scaffolding. There are 16 elongated grooves on both the cap and the barrel, which, along with the matte finish, give the arrow a very distinctive feel in your hand. The grooves help reduce the overall weight of this pen while maintaining its size. Um, I enjoy distinct pens like this, ones that you could recognize by touch alone, and a nib you could identify with your eyes closed. For me, the Arrow is one of these pens. Let's start by taking a look at the cap. Engraved on the top is the Diplomat Ink Flower logo, which is comprised of ink drops and inspired by the Maltese cross. Then we have the clip. I like the design of the Arrow's clip. It has a matte black coating and is a bit longer than on most other pens. The cap tapers up, and then it doesn't have a traditional band, but there is a smooth area where the grooves don't extend on both the barrel and the cap. In this space, it is engraved with Diplomat on one side and Germany on the other. Now, they made this change a couple of years ago, but on some of the older Aero models, this writing, uh, as well as the finial logo, were printed on rather than engraved. Switching to uh, the engraving was a good move, in my opinion. It's a very light engraving, so you don't feel like the letters and the logo have been gouged out of the metal. The transition between the cap and the barrel is virtually flush. Then the barrel tapers down to a rather pointed, rounded end, which is black to match the finial. The cap snaps off. Uh, this cap has a very satisfying click. The mechanism is, I'll say, very similar to the Pilot Pereira, where it provides kind of a soft sliding click that's rather addictive. This is one of those pens you could easily find yourself fidgeting with. Once you're done playing around with the cap, this is what's underneath. A very nice number six size stainless steel nib stamped with the Diplomat Inkflower logo. The nibs are available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and some retailers offer the 14 karat gold nib option at an increased price. The Diplomat steel nibs are outstanding though. And here is a look at the plastic feed. 
The section begins with a raised ring, which is part of the capping mechanism, and then rises up into a rather steep angled step up to the remainder of the barrel. I really like the section of the arrow. The matte treatment on the metal makes it very easy to grip. Uh, the section is rather long as well, so it accommodates a wide variety of grip styles. For me, the large step up is far enough back that it doesn't impede my grip, but even if you like to grip your sections a bit farther back and your fingers should rest on the transition, I don't find it to be uncomfortable. I find the arrow long enough to use unposted. It does post, and it does post fairly securely. I say fairly because with this severe taper, the cap basically has a very narrow contact point with the barrel. If you should hit the end, it has the potential to dislodge. But that's really not a big issue. While posted, uh, I don't feel the cap backweights the pen or throws off the balance. Um, I do find the edge of the cap will rub against my hand, which could be a bad thing, but I don't find the edge of the cap to be sharp or uncomfortable. Um, I do, however, prefer to use the arrow unposted. Um, I enjoy the tactile feeling of the grooved barrel against my hand. The arrow is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, two of which arrive with the pen, and a converter is provided as well. With the abundance of metal in this pen, eye dropping would not be advisable. The Diplomat Aero Turquoise typically retails for $180. I have found it in a few places for slightly less, but $180 is the standard price. With the Gold Nib option, the price increases to $360. I own arrows with both stainless steel and gold nibs, and frankly, I prefer the stainless steel. At $180, I feel this pen brings a lot to the table and is one of my favorite pens you could buy for under $200. Uh, in regard to how to win this very pen, you need to be a subscriber to this channel and then leave a comment below in YouTube. It's been a while since I've done a proper Q&A video, so it's about time I did one. So in regard to a comment topic, how about leaving a question? And I will do answer a number of them in an upcoming video. Um, if you want to know the origins of the fig boot name, that question gets asked a lot. You could check out my very first Q&A from around five years ago, where I answer that question. I'll put a link to that Q&A in the notes below if you want to check that out. Okay. In regard to this pen, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Diplomat Aero in turquoise. Uh, in regard to a couple of other colors of arrows, here it is with a black, and here it is with an orange, and then here it is with a pilot vanishing point. This is the rotten water surface. And then in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with an Estabrook Esti. This is the Maraschino. Uh, here it is with a Montegrappa Elmo. This is the Chrysiocola. And then finally, a pen that you'll be seeing reviewed here, uh, and this is from an Irish manufacturer named Gravitas, and this would be the Skittles pen. You can see that this has a really nice flame treatment to it, and uh, it's a nice pen that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with that Gravitas. This is the Skittles, like I said. Then here is the Elmo, and here is the Esti. So here we have the Diplomat Arrow, and this is the Turquoise. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using today is a new one from Private Reserve. And it's called Daphne Blue.
this is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice vibrant blue. I will say that on this paper, there was a lot of feathering to it. So we'll have to check it out on some other paper to see what kind of feathering it has, if it was just this paper uh, or if it's more the ink. Um, here it is in comparison to something like the Lamy Pacific Blue or the Kala Neon Blue. Uh, or even the Papier Plume Peacock Blue, which is a little bit lighter. And here it is with Visconti Turquoise, which is a little bit darker. This is what the Private Reserve bottles look like. It's 60 milliliters of ink, a really nice wide lid. Uh, it's not the most shallow, so a lot of times you're coming at it from an angle. But uh, I think in the somewhat near future, I'm going to be doing uh, an overview of just about every ink in the Private Reserve line, just to give you an idea of their offerings. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I mentioned this before, but the nib on the Diplomat here, the stainless steel, is excellent. Um, you're not going to get lots of line variation out of here, um, but it has just a, a bit of distinct feedback. I think the ink flow on here is decent in regard to reverse writing. I wouldn't say that that's the strength of this pen, but in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. So here we have the Diplomat Arrow Turquoise. Um, you know, the Arrow is a pen that's always been a little bit underrated in my opinion. Uh, so if you don't have one of these in your collection, I'd strongly recommend picking one up in any of the really solid colors that they've come out with recently. And don't uh, forget to leave your comment below for your chance in order to make this very pen your own. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.